Hello everyone, so let me provide a few more examples on capacity planning, efficiency and utilization. Okay, so let's look into this. So we're going to take a very simple example first from a classroom or for a lecture theater. And in this hypothetical example, let's say a classroom in any university has 60. So that's maximum students can be accommodated in that classroom base. So in order to expand on this example, on a given day, let's say one seat needs to be repaired, it's broken. And in another lecture theater, uh, we had a seminar going on, so five seats were removed or moved from this lecture theater to another. So on this note, we have the design capacity here. That's the maximum that can be accommodated, 60. But the effective capacity on a given day, due to one seat being broken and five are moved out, is only 54 seats. So now we are measuring capacity in terms of available seat, right, or seating capacity. Okay, let's add more information to this. So we need this room to run our operations or for a course delivery. And the room capacity, in this case my resource capacity, is design 60 and 54 due to uh, so when I, it comes to the how many students are processed, so that not only depends upon capacity, but that also depends upon the demand. In this example, let's assume that we have only 40 students enrolled in this course. So despite of that, I have 54 capacity here. We can accommodate 54 students. So the demand is only for 40. So this is going to have an impact on throughput. So that's why for the example we were doing, the utilization was not coming same when you use time aspect, after utilization over time, over a period, or you use number of units processed. So that's going to be different. So let's explore that part from here. So I'm going to add a bit more information. So if you think about a room in terms of, so in terms of time, the room is available for 24 hours, right? Okay, so let's say in this particular room, let's say E, 001, we have several classes scheduled uh, from morning to evening. The room is occupied for those several classes, let's say seven hours per day. So the uptime when the room is used is only seven hours. Otherwise, the room is closed, it's empty because there's no class scheduled. So from here, if from this perspective, if you want to look into the utilization of this room for, based on this scenario, it's going to be uptime over available. So if you use this, so the utilization is only 29%. So over the course of a given day, uh, the 29% of the time is utilized. So now let's look into the second uh, formula of the utilization. So the utilization, when you talk in terms of number of units being produced, uh, it is going to be uh, actual output rate divided by uh, design capacity. So for this particular course, uh, we have the actual output rate for the students, given that everybody is attending the class. So 40 divided by, so it is coming around 66.7%. So, so the point I'm trying to make here is, this is based on the availability within a given period. Right? This is based on number of units. The number of units will also be influenced by the demand, right? How much you want to manufacture. So that's why we're not getting those numbers uh, same uh, for the in-class example, right? Uh, so it's only in a perfect situation where you have, let's say, 54 students. Uh, demand is for 54 students. And we are teaching those students for seven hours in a day in that particular room. So only then these numbers will match. Right? So that was the point we missed. So that's why in our discussion, when we were in lecture, we said for the service sector, we use inputs to, to measure the capacity. Because you can know from, in, uh, the output is going to vary from course to course. If I want to measure the capacity and efficiency of this room, the output will vary, depending upon how many students are attending that course, based on the enrollment, right? Uh, however, it's easy to look into the inputs because these are fixed, right? And so you can measure capacity from the input field. So similarly, you can think about a fast food outlet. Let's say at Tim Hortons, you have two 
and tills there you place an order right at a given point the design capacity is two tills right and let's say during lunch lunch time one employee uh, is on lunch break so during that period the effective capacity is only one because one man till is closed because we don't have a resource to run that till right so now when it comes to calculating utilization so you need to look into the uh, average output rate because the output rate will vary based on the demand throughout the day right so demand is going to influence that so that's why these two utilization numbers will not okay so you may want to think about some of the examples uh, and if you have any questions please bring that to next class and we can discuss that and in next video i will walk you through one more example of capacity calculation thank you very much